Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Oji Akpe is here to discuss her exclusive interview with multiple award-winning actress Omotola Jalade Akainde. Good morning, Oji. Good morning, Leila. How are you? I didn't get the color memo again today. No, you didn't. You missed it again. <laughs> good morning, Dr. Abati. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> Hi, Tindra. How are you? Good morning. And good morning to you, viewers. Nollywood has transformed from making home videos to becoming one of the largest film industries in the world. One of the industry's pioneers is Omotala Jalade Ekeinde, who, with over two decades of acting experience, is now set to make African entertainers look beyond just entertainment with the launch of her festival, the Entertainment and Fair Festival. So here is a special feature on the multiple award-winning actress, Omotala Jalade Ekeinde. She has appeared in over 300 films and has received numerous high-profile awards, including being honored by the Nigerian government as a member of the Order of the Federal Republic for her contributions to the Nigerian cinema. Actress, singer, and philanthropist Omotala Jalade Ekeinde is arguably one of the most prominent entertainers in Africa. She's broken up. Do it now. Oh Over the years, she has acquired a massive fan base and is the first African celebrity to receive over 1 million likes on Facebook. Beyond her show business accomplishments, Amatala has also been applauded for her activism and remarkable humanitarian efforts. My name is Amatala. I was born in Ondo State in the Niger Delta region of Nigeria. I bring to you a message from Amnesty International. Oil pollution has destroyed the livelihoods of tens of thousands of people who depend on the environment to make a living and feed their families. In 2008, there were two massive oil spills from shell pipelines in Bodo. The pollution ruined the land and creek in Bodo. Join me in signing the petition to Peter Bosa. Shell's chief executive asking Shell to own up, pay up, clean up. In 2012, Omotala launched her own reality show, Omotala, The Real Me, which made her the first Nigerian celebrity to star in her own reality TV show. Honey, bye! <laughs> You respect your old days, you this <laughs> old one. <laughs> With a marriage spanning over two decades, a mortal and her husband, Captain Matthew Ekeinde, are no doubt considered one of Nigeria's most admirable celebrity couple. So my wedding was in 2001. I've actually been married since 1996. Um, I remember it was in a Dash 7 aircraft then belonging to Skyline. And uh, we flew from Lagos to Benin, and we got married in the air. <laughs> and we had uh, we had the pastors come on on board, and with myself and my husband, and we had uh, we had the guest of uh, how many people now? I think about 30 people, if I remember correctly. It was so funny because um, suddenly some people didn't remember the way to the airport that morning. <laughs> were there and you know they were crying about you are, are you where are you you know we're about to close the aircraft like oh i'm looking for the airport <laughs> seems to be uh, <clears throat> you know yourself <laughs> but you know it was an amazing experience it was uh, you know it was the first of its kind um it was quite tedious because you had to ensure everyone on board but it was a very lovely it was a lovely experience amatala continues to reinvent herself pushing her way through stardom in 2013 she was honored as one of the most influential people in the world by Time magazine. Um, so being announced as one of the most influential people in the world, Time 100, was very exciting. It was, it, it was, I had been reading about things like that prior. Um, and for some reason, I missed the fact that anything has actually get this uh, honor. Oh I actually thought it was just uh, political people or stuff. Um, so when I saw that, the first thing that, apart from the fact that I thought it was a lie, of course, I thought it was a hoax, the next thing I thought about is, I'm an actor, how, how does that even happen, you know? And then I, I went to see what category I was on. I knew it had to do with 
or I, I suspect it has to do with my humanitarian work and all the work I've been doing with the UN and stuff like that. But I wanted to be sure. And I went and I saw it was on that, the icon category. It was amazing and it has, it has opened so many doors for me. I think it was um, the beginning of another kind of um, career opportunity for me. Her Time Magazine honor was indeed a new career opportunity for the award-winning actress. In 2018, she was inducted by the Academy of Motion Pictures of Arts and Sciences to become a voting member for the Oscars. That same year, Omotela won the Best Actress Award at the Africa Magic Viewers' Choice Awards for the movie Alter Ego. Alter Ego, Omotala Jalade Ekende. This is so amazing. This is my first AMVCA, by the way. <laughs> Thank you so much. I want to say thank you so much to my wonderful husband, Captain Matthew Ekeine. I would never be standing here without you. The love and the kindness that you show me and the kids every day. Thank you so much for your support. Amatala's career in Nollywood has established her as a global success in the African film industry. But her thirst to leave a legacy behind for the future of entertainment in Africa gave rise to the creation of the entertainment fair and festival. Entertainment is Hello. the new one. We are more durable than gold and even diamonds. Because show business is serious money business. <laughs> ah. Tethest, promoting possibilities in the business of entertainment. Amatala's journey to redefine the entertainment industry in Africa was inspired by her children who are also in show business. One of them is her son, Captain E, who is a singer and a music producer. of the Entertainment and Fair Festival, I caught up with the actress to discuss the future of entertainment in Africa and much more. Omotala Jaladi, aka Indi. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. First of all, congratulations on the launch of the Entertainment and Fair Festival. Thank you, Ajay. Can you walk us through this festival? Tell us what it's about, what inspired this festival. Um, so the Entertainment Fair and Festival, um, Tefest, came about when, I've been thinking about it for a while, to be honest, um, I, pretty much because of all that we're going through in the industry, how much we have worked, how far we have come, and the fact that things are not you know, so much in place as we really want it. Um, but it's, it's a festival, or should I say, it's a platform that its time has actually come, because for the first time, a lot of things are now working together, you know, that we can actually now tangibly work towards. Okay, so just drive into details. What exactly is the festival? What is it about? So the festival is, uh, there are three legs to it. The first one is the fair. Okay. That's the heart of the festival because it has to be a business. Yes. It's, not, it's not a charity, you know. So the fair itself is a way to bring all businesses in, around, and that services entertainment together to begin some kind of community. You know, we need to get to know ourselves, you know. Um, so we're bringing all kinds of industries, you know. So you have the medical, you have the real estate. So for example, the kind of real estate we're working with are um, property owners or builders whose properties are, you know, lifestyle properties, you know. So you have amazing properties that are, 
entertainment purposes, like we like to say. So what are entertainers getting from this festival? For example, the medical field, what would you have the entertainers um, in the long from run. that? In the long run, our, uh, our hope is that they get to meet the people who are interested in their craft, all right? Because not all hospitals are interested in entertainment. Okay. But um, some medical, or should I say, because uh, I don't like to say just hospitals, because we have dentistry, we have all, even plastic surgery, okay. you know, so um, you get to meet the people who are actually interested in you and your job and your lifestyle, you know. So you get to know them, you get to do business with them. It kind of like bridges the gap. Um, say, for example, I met a lawyer yesterday. I didn't even know that their company existed. They're actually entertainment lawyers, proper entertainment lawyers. And I didn't, I had, proud to this time, I had never heard about them. But because of Tefas, for the first time, I'm meeting them. And so these are the opportunities that I had before that I thought I was bringing to the table. But even now, it's amplified, because now I'm meeting more people um, because of this um, platform now, more people are stepping forward and saying, look, we're here. We want to do business with you guys, you know. And um, for the first time, would you guys have some kind of organized front uh, or platform that makes sense business-wise for us to be able to liaise um, one way or the other, either by networking, either by um, the other parts, which is the three legs, uh, uh, seminars, you know. We're bringing them to the, our seminars. They're speaking uh, um, with us. At TFS, we don't talk about problems. We talk about solutions. That's our goal, all right? So when they come there, we want them to prefer solutions, okay? When it comes to... Um, to investment opportunities. What are the solutions out there? There are so many secretive investment opportunities that other industries or other personalities are doing that we don't know about. Government bonds, you know, some kind of real estate, you know, some kind of, for example, I just found out recently that you can actually invest in owning a private jet with a collective. Fantastic. Do you know, we don't even think about things like that, you know. But these other folks in other in industries know these things. So you is know, it nice interaction them. between all the entertainers and the business people? Are you bringing any global um, investors or global businesses into Tepes? Luckily for the first uh, one, we already are. I didn't think it was going to happen with the first one. I thought, okay, maybe from the second one or so. But we are collaborating with Google. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> so we're collaborating with Google and YouTube this first one. Um, so that's there, and then we have, the, we have the director of strategy and operations for Google actually flying in. Mr. Craig Fenton is flying in with, uh, with an entourage of about five people. We're so excited about this. This is the first time he's coming to Nigeria. I actually think it's the first time he's coming to Africa. Oh, wow. So it's a big deal. Um, Omotola, you are one of the pioneers of Nollywood, and you have seen Nollywood transition and transform to become this huge business, right? right. So you'll be the p best person to tell us what Nollywood really needs to become what it needs to be at this point. Um, what we need right now is a structure, to be honest. Um, we have amazing talent. We have wonderful, um, intelligent people. We have people with passion. We have, um, we have everything else we probably would need, you know, when it comes to human resources. What we need right now is just to be organized. <laughs> we just need um, structure. And then we need infrastructure. So structure and infrastructure. Right. Um, so when you say infrastructure, I know that we have had that home video culture for so long. And now we're transitioning into the cinema culture, mm -hmm. correct? The last time I interviewed you, Omotala, you told me you had like some um, people that you were talking to about the cinema culture. Yeah. Tell us, what is that progress? Now, this is a problem because you're my personal friend now. Yes, so you're now, to... you're, you're divulging my personal no, discussion. No, we, right we had the interview on Arise TV. I, I did say that. <laughs> We both had that interview on So, ours. we did. Yes, and that's what she said. That was the last time I interviewed Interviewed me. Yes. Wow. I guess you get it all out of me, don't yeah. you? <laughs> well, so, I mean, um, we're still on that. Um, I'm talking to some partners. And it might not be the kind of conventional cinema, but it is some sort of cinema. And um, there's a lot of research going on as to how we like to watch movies and how we want to now begin to distribute movies, either online and when it's physical, in what way physically, what works for us, what's indigenous to us, why do people actually go out to go watch anything or just go hang out, and how do we, because the goal eventually is just to make them watch movies, right, and to make them enjoy um, content. So how do people enjoy content? What is the traditional way, and is the traditional way actually now extinct? You know, I mean, are we still holding on to it, you know? Um, by force and have people moved on for it. So it's, it's a lot of research going on and that's what we're going into, but I'm not going to say more than that for now. Right, I was talking to a good friend of mine, he's an actor as well, and basically 
the bottom line of what Nollywood needs is more cinemas at the end of the day because no matter how much money we put into making a film in Nollywood, you really need to get your return. Mm. So to make a good quality film, you need a good budget, right? right? And then once you have that budget, how would you get that money back? So it, it doesn't necessarily mean cinemas, it just means distribution and getting your money back. Exactly. Because yeah. this is 2019, a lot of people don't go to the cinemas anymore. I don't. You see? <laughs> and it's not, it's not an indictment on the people who do that sort of business because there will always be people who want to go watch, I mean, just like football. There are people who prefer to watch their football at home. But there will always be people who want to go watch it in a stadium with so many other people. You know, it's just the experience, right? right? So there are people who always want to go to the cinema because of the experience, even though they could watch that movie at home or on a plane or whatever. There's so many other places or ways or mediums to watch a movie, okay? Um, and online, online is big now. Most of those little kids don't, don't go anywhere to go watch, no. They don't even watch TV anymore. I was in my daughter's... So everything is on your tablet right now. It's on your right tab now. right yeah, now. Correct. You know, I was in my, my daughter's home in, in LA, and all this hand, she stays with all these white kids. She's the only black one there. And I was thinking, ah, I want no man, Nigeria, because here, you know, virtually every Sunday we, com we commune. We sit down and watch TV, right? So it was a Sunday, and I came to hang out with them, her and her friends. And I, because I, I always try to tell her to teach people, you know, our culture and everything. And I was like, oh, yes, yeah, movie time. And she's looking at me like, huh? <laughs> I was like, movie time. Let's see. You did tell your friends that we do this and everything. She's like, Mom, nobody does that. <laughs> and I, truly, I looked at the TV and it was dusty. I was like, you guys don't watch TV. You, how do you guys, you know? They're like, no, Mom, everybody's, uh, nobody watches TV, you know? And it dawned on me that, oh, my God, my generation is different. Like, these guys, you know, everything they want to consume is on their phone. Nollywood had a major setback with the disqualification of it, its first entry, right, Lionheart. Mm -hmm. And since you were a voting member, was there anything that you could have done to prevent this type of disqualification to have happened? Yeah, it's, it's very sad that it happened because um, being a member of the Oscars, I had, as soon as I got in, written that letter, you know. Um, to, what letter? Uh, so I wrote a letter to the, to the Academy and, and, and asked for that to be reviewed for Nigeria, using Nigeria as a case study, to be, um, to be precise. Um, and I made it very clear that, you know, this is our official language to some extent. You know, that's what English is our of, official English, yes. language. Correct. That's what unifies right. all of us, even though we have our indigenous languages. But then, you know, we're, com we're a complex country with so many languages, what, 200 and something? Like, uh, but even the languages, you know. So I said, um, this is our official language. and. Most of us do movies in English language, you know. So this is going to be a problem because how do you encourage people to um, put in movies, you know, put it forward as a country, and then you decide that, or you tell them that you're going to have to shoot for the Oscars? It's going to be really hard, you know. Okay. So I, I I wrote that letter to them, and um, at the time they said, you know, they were going to be looking into it, you know, because it's a big deal. I mean, this is a con this. I mean, this is an academy that has been. Um, you know, it's been in operation for how many years? It's not going to be easy for them to change their rules, okay. you know, overnight. But so it was the on moment the table. you joined, you realized that if Nollywood was going to be part of the Oscars, they would need to restructure their way of sub submission. Yeah, correct? the kind of yeah, the kind the, of the, the movies, the that guidelines. And then you wrote a letter to the Academy telling them that English was our official language, and they said to you what? It, it, it will be reviewed. <laughs> well, not reviewed, but it, it, they acknowledge that, okay, they've heard. Okay. But, you know, um, yeah, it's on the table. I mean, they know that this, you know. But it, it wasn't like, okay, yeah, so we're not, this is not going to be the guideline anymore. It's what it is. It you is know? what it is. And so you don't go into someone's house and try to change their rules. Right. You just appeal to them that this is how it works for you. Otherwise, go do yours, right? right. So we should have waited. You know, we should have waited till when that was right for us to do that. So it's unfortunate that that happened, but the discussion is going to continue because I don't see us shooting movies just for the Oscars. You said we, shouldn't, we should have waited, and so that is the Nigerian Oscar Selection Committee, correct? I guess. They should have waited. <laughs> now, why didn't they come to you in the first place to ask you for um, criteria? Because you're a voting member, the whole world knows you're a voting member, so you would know the criteria. Why didn't they approach you? 
I wouldn't know, <laughs> but I guess everyone knows the guidelines. Yeah, um, so probably, you know, I mean, they know. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm sure they I really can't because they came out with a letter saying that right. they made a mistake and they should have reviewed the guidelines. Yeah. And so, but now they're encouraging more filmmakers to make more foreign movies. Yeah. So they're going to. I mean, what they're going to have to do right now is to start as as the committee. They're going to have to start to st um, to talk to filmmakers. On the guidelines, which is right. that's their job. They have to now start to liaise and talk to the filmmakers on the guidelines and what the specifications are and stuff. Because people, people are not some people are not familiar with it. And one of the things when we're going to do Tefis, when I reached out to them, was come on the platform, okay, take a stand. Um, and speak or something so that people can actually begin to familiarize with this um, process and understand exactly what it is. Because up until now, we really didn't care that much for the Oscars. Yes. But from maybe our, from my, my time when now we're getting into the Oscars and right. all of that stuff and with um, Genevieve's movie. And so now everyone is aware about the Oscars and not, not like we're aware, we've always known it, but yeah. not this much, you know, not like intentionally. So, but now it's in the air. And so this is a time to really start to engage people. You have remained successful, Omotala, not only in your <laughs> career, but also in your marriage. Your marriage is over 20 years, oh, right? Yeah. How have you maintained that? It will be 25 years. <laughs> it's been what it is, you know. I mean, marriage is, is like I say to everyone, is an effort. It's not luck. It's just a lot of work. It's, it's, and, and most of the work is on yourself. You have to decide at some point what is important to you. Um, is your peace of mind important? Is your is this? And you have to weigh that person as well. No one is perfect. I'm not even perfect. And even in this relationship, my friends will say my husband is the one holding the, the marriage, not me. That's what they all say. Oh, they're nodding your head. <laughs> <laughs> because you know when you meet my husband, they're like, oh my God, an angel. But he he has his own issues too. He has trouble. Yeah. You know, but people don't know that. You know, I see it, but a lot of people don't see it. You know, so no one is perfect. But you you weigh people, and like you say, does this person's good outweigh the bad? Yeah. Yeah, but you're considered Nigerians' hottest couple. You guys are so, <laughs> you guys are amazing together all the time. Thank you. And everyone, your, your, your relationship is so admirable. And I know your husband gave you that name, Almost Sexy. He did. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right? It and, is. And with a name like that, I bet you get a lot of attention. And I'm sure that a lot of men, you know, mm. are <laughs> very attracted to that name. Now, I'll, I'll ask you this question. I know that you're, you've been married throughout your career as well. Have you ever experienced any kind of sexual harassment? Luckily, no. Really? No, I haven't. I really haven't. Um, advances, yes, yes, all the time. A harassment, no. Um, I don't know if I'm lucky or there's a way I appear to not... I don't know. I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to say people who get harassed, you know do something to, to bring it on this. So that's, that's not the right thing to say. I've just been lucky, I guess, uh, but I haven't been. And how do you think that you're able to maintain that? Um, I guess people who, maybe I've just been lucky enough to meet anyone who is that kind of person. I don't know, but I can only say what I know, right? right. And so I, I know what I do. Right. And what I do is I try not to, I try to help myself. I try not to put myself in positions where um, someone will get the wrong impression. So I'm very, fr I'm friends with a lot of people. I'm friends with a lot of uh, people in high places. Would low, you say that being married of... helped you with that? No, or... not to Nigerian men okay. at all. Actually, Th that's to... what I thought. Yeah. I, I, I actually think Nigerian men think married women are actually more attractive. I think, in fact, a friend of mine told me that they'd rather go for married women because they have a lot to lose. Which <laughs> <laughs> I love my head up. I was like, really? She said, yeah. A lot of us would rather date Nigerian, uh, uh, married women right. because she has a lot to lose. She's not going to go, you know. I'm like, wow. But I feel like the Nollywood industry is not, um, not being vocal with this sexual harassment thing uh, or, you know, with the Me Too movement it, yeah. gaining that global acceptance. I don't, I don't see anyone from Nollywood ever talking about Do you think it doesn't exist in Nollywood or is it just... A culture. It does. It does. And I don't know why they are not doing that because Nollywood um, has a lot of strong women. Very, very strong women. In fact, I would say women run Nollywood. 
That's the truth. Women, I've heard that a lot. Women run Nollywood, and we've been yeah. running Nollywood for a very long time. A lot of men will tell you the women actually run Nollywood. So you have a lot of people who can actually defend you, who can bounce ideas with you. Um, I think Nollywood is not really hostile to women. Women have um, opportunities to come out, succeed, talk about whatever the problems are. I will agree that we don't support ourselves enough, so maybe that might be some deterrent, you know. I mean, we're trying to change that. My generation is trying to change that. empowered so many people not just in the entertainment industry but the underprivileged and I, you must be really commended for this thank you and so with your Tefest festival the entertainment and fair festival what would you want people to take out of that festival um, first and foremost we want to empower the younger generation that's very important to me um, I want to make sure that they don't suffer the things that we have I want to make sure that, by God's grace, that they meet the right people, that they network with the right people that can empower them um, and enrich them. <laughs> That's very important that, they, that we get sustainable wealth. Because as an entertainer, if you have to depend at this stage solely on entertainment to survive, you will compromise. Part of the reason why, or reasons why I, I can choose my scripts and the work I do today is because I have other means of of income. Um, and so I'm trying to encourage that um, with Tefas. I'm trying to help people learn this on time and find the people who are interested in working with them. I'm trying to also, we have a pitch competition in Tefas, and the pitch competition is not for content um, pro producers for now. So if you're shooting a movie or you're uh, doing music, it's not for you at this point. It is actually for the entrepreneurial part of of the entertainment business, so people behind the scenes. So, for example, um, you build cameras, uh, um, equipments, or you, you you are into props. Those are the kind of people that we're trying to raise money for. Okay. Um, I call them the foundation of entertainment. And we have amazing angel um, investors right now that have signed up with us for the first one, and we're doing bigger things even in 2020. So these are, these are the things we're trying to first do with Tefes. The main purpose of Tefes, all in all, is to make sure that the entertainment industry becomes the wealthy um, industry that it ought to be, genuinely wealthy industry. And in other climes like Bollywood, you know, they're the biggest contributor to the, to, to the country's GDP. Absolutely. And that's what we should really be. Absolutely. I know a friend of mine always says entertainment is the new crew. It is Correct. the new crew. And Amatala, it's a serious business. Thank you so much for joining me on this program. You have been fantastic. And I wish you all the best with thank the Entertainment you, and Fair Festival. The entertainment, Fair and Festival. <laughs> Be there. <laughs>